is the CEO of MediaCom UK, and she was named the UK's seventh most influential black person in last year's Power List. Karen, take it away. Good evening, everybody. Um, I am so, so honoured uh, to be invited here this evening and to meet everybody here, and I really can't wait to talk to a few more people because I love this sort of event and I love this sort of organisation just because I get to meet other people that face the same struggles and challenges that I have and also for me to find inspiration from the people in the room so I really can't wait to meet some more people tonight. So Diane asked me to talk a little bit about my journey um, and also a bit about an apprenticeship programme which I've launched at Mediacom. Um, for those of you that don't know, Mediacom and my agency, we are the largest media planning and buying agency in the UK. Uh, we have billings of about 1.1 billion and have about 900 employees with offices in six different um, cities around the UK. And we have a range of different clients ranging from people like Audi um, through to BW, through to Sky TV, through to the Met Police and the Home Office. So a whole range of different clients and we plan and buy all of their advertising campaigns. And my journey into the industry was a bit of an accident, if I'm, if I'm really honest. Um, I saw an ad in The Independent for a uh, media researcher and I had done a geography and statistics degree and applied uh, for this position in The Independent and I went in for the interview and I remember uh, the person that was interviewing me decided, oh actually she's a big lobby, um, she was better at negotiating rather than working in the research team. So that's how I entered into the media planning and buying um, world, uh, purely by accident and I have been incredibly lucky that I have managed to have people that have supported me all the way along. And it's interesting, so when I'm thinking about my journey, and I remember being in Reading, I grew up in a working class family in Reading, um, a daughter of uh, Barbados immigrants, first generation immigrants, and I remember in 1987, my dad calling me into the living room and saying, look, look, we've got a black woman in Parliament. <laughs> and that was Diane. And my dad gave me three really important lessons, uh, which myself and my sister sort of used throughout our careers. Uh, the first one is you have two ears and one mouth, mm. and use them in that proportion. And it is something that I have absolutely done, because I do believe that listening is really key to my journey, and being able to work out, it's not necessarily what's written on a brief, but what somebody can tell you has held me in good stead. The other one is that you're black and you're female, you have to try twice as hard as anybody else. And that absolutely resonated. When I was at school, I had to be better than everybody else in my class. Whether that was running, whether that was maths, whether that was English, I had to try twice as hard as everybody else. And that was the same when I got into the workplace as well. And then the third area, um, and it's one which I share with Vanessa, this young lady over there, was about celebrating your differences because I recognised that when I entered into the media world there weren't many people that looked like me and that is still the case as the CEO of the biggest agency if I look at my competitors my CEOs of my competitive agencies really don't look like me um, and that makes me memorable and so I have used that to my advantage so I have to make sure that I'm good at what I do but I make sure that people remember me for the good reasons. Mm -hmm. So when I am trying to pitch for new business or pitch for clients, they will remember me because I'm very different to anybody else that they are seeing and anybody else that walks into the room. So it is something which I think is really important because I couldn't understand why there weren't other people like mm -hmm. me in the industry. And if what I do and what my agency does is try and change consumer behavior, or if I try and change a perception of a brand or try and sell products to consumers, I think it's really important that the agency reflects society that you live in. Because at the end of the day, whether that's Audi or whether it's the Met Police or whether it's the Home Office or whether it's um, a FMCG brand like Mars, my agency has to build empathy with every single person in the UK. And I think it's easier to build empathy if you've managed to walk the walk and you've walked in the shoes of the people that you're trying to communicate with. 
So I couldn't understand why the industry that I worked in tended to be people that went to normally Ivy League universities and nepotism does exist in my industry <laughs> and people were hiring their nephews, nieces or goddaughters or god godsons. So one thing that I promised myself and promised my family was that if I got into a position of influence that I would try and change the industry and try and give talent the chance to flourish because I do think it's incredibly important. So trying to encourage people to come into the industry who are from all walks of life, so black, white, different social grades, try and make sure that they have an opportunity to join the industry because it's really hard trying to get in. So just giving those people an opportunity was something that I really wanted to do. So last year, I launched the apprenticeship program and I, I saw Tim Campbell's flashed up on the screen earlier. It was a conversation that I had with Tim um, who uh, was the apprenticeship czar for Boris Johnson and talked to me about, you know, you can do it, you can change people's lives, you can make sure that you change the diversity of the industry, take on some apprentices, and it was something that I really wanted to do. Especially if the industry just employs graduates, because with the number of people that aren't able to afford to go to university, with university fees, there is a huge, huge chance that we're going to lose talent from the industry. So it's trying to make sure that talent has an opportunity to shine. So last year, we launched an apprenticeship program with the National Apprenticeship Service, and we took on 10 young employees, um, aged 18 to 21, and they uh, are not graduates. They work with us for 12 months, Whilst they are working with us, they qualify for an NBQ in marketing and communications. And at the end of the 12 months, they have an opportunity to apply for a permanent position at the agency. And they are doing real work. They're not making cups of tea. They're not doing the filing and photocopying. They are doing the same work that a graduate does. And I spend a lot of time with the um, apprentices. So every four months, they change different departments within the agency. And they're almost at the end now. It's July that they finish and I have seen them grow. I have really seen them visibly grow and their confidence grow. And they've come from all different works of life. I've wanted Londoners to make it easier for them to work in London on apprenticeship wage, but I've literally seen them, the chips that were on their shoulders when they walked in, thinking that everybody in the agency came from a really rich background and everybody had a degree, and that was their main concern when they walked in. And I've seen them now literally grow into really responsible, confident, enthusiastic, and passionate individuals. And I would encourage anybody here that has a business and has the opportunity to take on some apprentices, please do it because you really do make a difference to people's lives. And for me, it's about future proof in my agency as well. So it's not just about giving somebody a chance and giving talent a chance. I know that if I have the best people working at the agency, I have the most diverse workforce at the agency, that the byproduct of investing in people is actually profit. <coughs> it works for me as well. Very good. So I would encourage you all, that's just a really quick rendition of my entry into the industry. I'm, as I said, really excited to be here tonight. And during my career, I had the opportunity to have a number of mentors and cheerleaders. And I think this organization acts as fantastic cheerleaders for a number of women that want to go into business. And I remember that when I was growing up, we had lots of sports people that were role models, and uh, Claire Huxtable from The Cosby Show was one. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is a fantastic organisation. I firmly believe in giving as much energy back as I've had during my career, and I really look forward to talking to somebody later on. <laughs>